older than my father. She was always taken for Catherine Hepburn in the street, and I didn't realize until I had seen her in an interview that she sounded like Catherine Hepburn, too. She, uh, her mother came from the same town. So uh, she just had this sort of radiance about her. My mother just loved to change. Uh, she didn't have my father's obsessions, and I think in a sense it may have hurt her a little bit. She would do something and then do it as well as she could and then get bored and then uh, switch to another thing. Now, uh, my mother was most famous, really, in the 20s as a precisionist. And, of course, it, it wasn't called precisionism. It was called the New Classicism. Uh, and it's very much how my mother approached it. My mother had studied art in uh, Italy, and she loved the classical forms. And so when she went got interested, which they all did at the same time. I mean, people think that my mother and DeMuth and Sheila were uh, like sitting in an attic somewhere deciding to start an art movement. She never met any of them. They all, for some reason, started to do factories and uh, bridges and planes at exactly the same time. John Follinsby was born in Buffalo, New York in 1892. As a child, he contracted polio and was forced to use a wheelchair for the rest of his life. Florensby began his art education in Woodstock, New York, at the Art Student League with George Harrison. In 1946, Florensby came to New Hope, where he spent the rest of his life painting. Florensby exhibited widely and attained many honors, including more than 10 awards from the National Academy of Design. He was represented by one or more paintings in each courtroom biennial between 1916 and 1945. He was awarded the third William A. Clark Prize and Bronze Medal in 1921. John Farnsby died in 1972. studied at the Art Institute in Chicago and went on to New York City and studied with William Merritt Chase at the Art Students League. Coppledge then moved to Philadelphia, attending the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts. In 1917, she made her first sojourn to Newark. Bucks County would be the artist's permanent home for more than 30 years. Coppledge died in Newark on April 21, 1951, at the age of 67.
Jim McGill, uh, also the Isadora Duncan of the um, She was, um, it's been described as a woman with the, 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 the body of a farm girl and the, the, the spirit or heart of fire. Um, she was serious about her art, she produced a great art, and she had a flamboyant lifestyle. And I think those are all things that people enjoy greatly about to go
give this community a first class regional museum. The history of New Hope ranks the community as a leading artist center in America. Bucks County probably has more artists and galleries than anywhere on the eastern seaboard, with a tradition which continues in the community through patronage for the arts. Today, visitors to New Hope enjoy the vestiges of New Hope and Lambertville's artistic past and enjoy the thriving artistic community of the present. It is one element of this multifaceted, diversified community that is a common thread, a deep respect for the history and heritage.